Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back in to some more bite-sized business advice. And today we got, check this out, we got five steps to maintain a mindset for success. I love this. I can't wait to dig in. It's been, I don't even know, at least a couple of weeks since we've done a, a mindset episode here. And let's unpack this, a mindset for success. I have an amazing guest, Deborah Bowers. Welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have this discussion. Uh, I'm jacked up. I love mindset episodes, but I'm a little bit confused. You're into sales, you're into marketing, your deals with heels. Where's the yep. mindset piece? Why are we talking about mindset? Because mindset is everything. And until I had that the mindset in, that, that I needed and found my place, I didn't have the success that I needed to move forward with my business or with my podcast. Um, mindset's crucial and having the right mindset for owning a business or being in sales or being an executive or whatever it is that you do. It, it's so important. Yeah. I mean, I fully agree with that. And it's, it's even more present when you're talking about sales uh, and, and the marketing piece too. I mean, it's so easy to just have that mindset really just drift off. You're not seeing the results. You're not seeing success. You're getting a lot of no's. Uh, for you, what was what was first? Was it were you in sales or marketing first? I know they're kind of the same thing, but I'm just curious. You know, they're really not the same thing. Well, actually, I think everything is um, is about sales. Every ounce of marketing is about sales because we're doing it for one reason. And there's a lot of reasons why businesses go out of business. If you don't hire the right accountant, we, are you going to go out of, well, you might go out of business. What about if you make the wrong content? You might go out of business. You know, if you uh, form it wrong, if you hire the wrong attorney, if you hire the wrong personnel, all of those things can make, can make you go out of business. If you don't sell your products and services, you're absolutely going out of your business. Uh, it, it, it just, it's essential. And we lose track of that. And when I, I ran a lot of big marketing departments and they were always in high stress sales companies, right? And so I always was around. So sometimes sales were under me in the marketing department, but my first jobs were sales. And my, my first jobs that even got me thinking about marketing were sales. And actually I was in college and, uh, one of my roommates, um, a boy named Dan, he was the head guy at OSU Foundation. I went to Oklahoma State University and they raised money for academics and he was running their telemarketing for He was the boss and was my roommate. And so my other roommate, Vaughn, she and I got a job working for Dan, raising money. And we were calling people on the telephone um, uh, alumni. So we weren't calling mean people and, and this was the eighties. So people weren't as mean as they are. Now. <laughs> but, um, well, I mean, we know we didn't have any other way. There was no texting. We we're actually calling on the phone. And, uh, so turns out I was really good at it. I raised more money than anyone else. My senior year, I was telemarketer of the year and I was so good at it. It made me add marketing into my communications degree and get some of that. Um, I, I don't have a, a double major or anything, but I had to add all of that in. I was so good at it. And straight out of college, I got a job as commercial sales manager for multimedia cable vision. And they uh, sold to Cox cable right after Cox communications now, right after I left there, but I worked there about 10 years and ran their marketing department. For a good portion of that but i really started out selling cable television to hotels and businesses and so really cut my teeth in that direct sales environment uh with you know keep 
hotel owners, most generally were, the last name was Patel. They were from India and that culture, so great negotiating. And here I was 23 and my, you know, it, and I learned a lot when I worked there. And then I did that for a couple of years. And then I started working in their marketing department and worked my up, way up through that. And then I got stolen away about uh, a year before Cox bought them. But I learned a ton in marketing um, for multimedia. We we had in-house our own in-house mailroom. We sent our own bills. We I processed we processed our own marketing mail. I could walk off and pull one off the off the conveyor belt and look at it. And it taught me a lot. And all of that machinery is pretty much the same. It's kind of weird. I toured a place a few years ago and it was like that looks like the exact same machine from the 90s. But that's how I got into marketing and I love it. I'm good at it. I took a little break and raised five kids and did a lot of other things and uh, ran my husband's business at the time, my now ex-husband. And I sacrificed a lot to raise those kids. And part of what I sacrificed was my mindset, right? I was a mom. I was in that mom mindset. And that mom mindset involves taking care of everyone else's needs above your own. It, it, it doesn't, if your kid needs something, it doesn't matter if you need something to, they come first and and you get used to doing that and then it comes time to be yourself again and i had no idea who that person was and so that was a difficult time my marriage fell apart uh in 2020 and i was really close to my mom and my mom passed away in 2021 and I'd love to be able to tell you that I just made up my mind. I'm going to change my mindset and I'm going to be great. But I was definitely thrust there by all of that, those tragedies happening to me. And I lost a significant amount of weight. I, um, I only weigh about 130, 135 now. And I lost all the way down to 115 and I felt frail and unhealthy and i definitely did not feel unstoppable or any of the things that i feel now and so that um was the first thing that i had to change and i made some non-negotiable boundaries with myself the first i'm not going to eat fast food i was coming home i was grabbing food on the way home literally sitting on my bed eating it, watching television and not, uh, not eating a lot of it um, because I was so thin, but that was the big step. And it brings to number one on my five step list, which is you have to take care of yourself physically. You physical health is so important for your mindset and it doesn't have to be, it's not like you got to be physically fit and doing kickboxing every day, but you have to make choices that that are healthy and that you are working towards a place of good physical health it's important you have to be able to hold that success right your vessel where you live your skin all of that has to be able to hold all of the success you're trying to get and if you're not prepared for it it's going to be really hard for you to hold it. it. It'll be overwhelming. It'll be success is hard too, right? It's hard to manage it. It's hard to make those choices. And it it's important to be in a mindset of I take care of myself. I don't do unhealthy things. I don't self-sabotage myself with alcohol so that I can't do what I need to do the next day. Those types of behaviors are you just can't succeed with those. And so it's really an important step in becoming physically fit and having that mindset. For me, I was an athlete growing up. And so, and I, I mean, I played basketball until my early thirties. And so it, it was, I didn't feel like myself, right? I felt frail and weak and I never felt like that my whole life. And so it was a big step. My, my next step was 
I'm only going to be in my bedroom for two reasons. I'm not going to sit on my bed and eat in my bedroom and I'm not going to uh, spend my life in there. And so if I'm out, I've got a little kind of open area, living room, kitchen, then I'm going to be much more apt to cook. I'm a great cook. And so I wasn't even doing that. And so I did that. And I will say it's been two and a half years and I have eaten fast food less than five times. So it, I can't really even eat it now, but I am a sucker for Freddy's. It's a, 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 I probably, I bet all five were probably Freddy's when I ate that. <laughs> So that was definitely my first steps and exercising. Um, even if it's just somatic exercises and just moving your arms and stretching and those little things, it makes a difference. Uh, they've proven that your muscles actually secrete hormones and chemicals when you move them and you use them. And those things help your brain and help your brain be happy and gives you uh makes it healthy your brain healthy so just using them a little bit especially if you haven't been using them and getting outside pretty much all americans are low in vitamin d and it, it's really important we're meant to be outside we're not meant to sit inside all the time and that makes us uh really susceptible to all kinds of different diseases, especially autoimmune diseases when we're critically low in vitamin D. And so you can get a ton of it just by going outside without sunscreen for 10 minutes. But so all of those things, making those kinds of healthy choices for your, for your physical health is really the first step. And, and once you start doing it, take one at a time. Nobody needs to be jumping in and, working out so hard you can't walk the next day because you're sore you will be guilty of that but um it's unnecessary small steps choices the choice making the choice is what's important to your mindset so that's definitely number one yeah that one's it's so so crucial and i think it's most often overlooked because we're busy or or whatever we have going on and we can't prioritize it but i've seen a firsthand at multiple points in my life the lack of physical health will will prevent you from doing anything and if you don't have it if you don't prioritize it the other side of that too is like if you don't have that discipline with yourself to take care of yourself like you were saying mm -hmm. i mean you don't you don't have the discipline to, to effectively run a business and to lead people that's what you're communicating to other people when you don't take care of yourself and you don't have that discipline. And maybe I'm a little hard on this, but I just hold myself to a higher standard. And it sounds like Deborah, you do too. But I, I look at people who don't take care of themselves and I know I can't fully trust them. And that's a big statement, but I'm willing to make it because I've seen it hold true over and over. It, it definitely, if you can't control what you put in your body, right? What can you control? Yeah. I mean, that's the essential thing. I mean, I have very little control over the world and, and I'm okay with that. The world can do whatever it wants. I'm going to be like this no matter what. That's so I, I listen to a lot of Sadhguru and I love, he's very, this is me. And I'm not giving that power away to, so that you can make me feel uncomfortable, but you know, they, the food processed food in the United States has no nutrients. And so you're still hungry when you eat it. As a result, our digestive tract is always full. And because of that, our body can't do anything else but digest. And you're still hungry because there's no nutrients. They eat more processed food. So it, I've been down that rabbit hole and it will do nothing but piss you off to go there <laughs> about how much, I mean, the food pyramid, the food pyramid, propaganda for the agricultural industry. And so that should tell you everything you need to know about the choices and the recommendations um, by our government for what we should eat. So yeah, um, that is quite the rabbit hole. I've been down that one myself. Oh, not yeah, not just, exactly what this episode is dedicated no, for. We not. should do an Another episode on day. that. Because day. that <laughs> more people um, need to hear that. Um, and really no. the, the second step, and this is really key to being disciplined and discipline discipline wins the day 
no matter what the race is. And you can't only work when you're motivated. You can't only sell when you're motivated. You can't only exercise when you're motivated because no one's motivated every day. And you can't count on that. And to say, I'm going to be motivated every day, it, it, it's ridiculous, right? You, it, you can never be that. You're setting yourself up to fail. Discipline is what wins. It always does. And so for me, what helps me be disciplined is to know what my why is. Why am I doing the things I'm doing? Why am I being an entrepreneur? Why am I making the choices that I'm making? Why did I start a podcast? Finding out what your why is, is really critical to having the right mindset because you have that in there. That's your passion. That's what really gets you going. That's what lights the fire. That's what makes you get up at 6 a.m. and work out so that you feel strong for the rest of the day is the why reason. And it's never to make money. <laughs> Let me just say that up front. Your why is not to make money. And I mean, I lived it right. I raised five kids. I, I had to make money. They're expensive. And so a lot of what I did during that time frame was what was necessary. And so your why, it doesn't come from a place of lack and a place of need. It comes from desire and your willing where you feel compelled to give back the problems you even if you're selling something what problem are you solving are you passionate about it and so finding that's really important um i wish it were easy to find it right <laughs> I, that, gosh if, we would be rich if we could figure that out um how simple it is for me it's really about um spending time alone with yourself without distraction and it's crazy how uncomfortable we all are with that, but it, it's the only way to really feel yourself and think about, and you don't really guide your thoughts. You just automatically kind of start thinking about it. Um, and, and it's really important to do it. One of the things that, that stopped me from doing it and finding my why was, um, I felt like I was procrastinating and I just kept putting it off and putting it off. And I would, if I had my to-do list and it might have something about that on it, um, I just, I just couldn't do it. I was just procrastinating. And after my mother died, I went into counseling, grief counseling, because I just really wasn't okay. That was part of my boundaries with myself too. I'm going to go to counseling. And one day I was telling Fred, my counselor, um, I was struggling with procrastination. I was super frustrated with myself and of course, classically hard on myself. And uh, Fred, when I finished, Fred said, Deborah, you're not procrastinating. And I said, Fred, you're not listening to me. I am procrastinating. And he said, no, you're not. You're in fight or flight, but you're the deer. You're in freeze. And I was in functional freeze. I could not make a decision because thinking about making that decision for whatever reason sent me into fight or flight, not rationally or consciously, but I, I couldn't choose. Uh, I That's why I was running my husband's business and helping this person and doing that with this person because I couldn't make up my mind. And he gave me one grounding technique. Um, that snapped me out of it and like it snapped me out of it instantly every time I do it. So if I feel that feeling, I can do it. It's called five, four, three, two, one. You can Google it. It's really quick. And uh, Fred said it would pull people out of straight up a delusion. What it does is it grounds you to the here and now, and it's safe here. And once your senses, it goes through all your senses and you, you realize your subconscious realizes that this is a safe place. Now, if you're not in a safe place, then that's not going to work, right? If you really are legitimate, but I wasn't legitimately in fight or flight, but getting rid of once that was gone, once I was out of functional freeze, then the answers came. The answers came because I was willing to make that decision. And I was 
prepared as a person to fulfill it and to do it. And I, I couldn't do it before. And so that was a big step for me in finding my why was figuring out why I was blocked and stuck. And I wonder how many people are maybe even in that in that state and don't even know it because the like procrastination when people talk about procrastination um i, I don't know I, I i think a lot of people could relate to that because we all want something we want to grow our business we want to make more money we want to have more freedom but you still don't take the right actions and i'm curious i don't know maybe it's it's something to consider if you're listening if you find yourself in that in that mindset um yes. that's very interesting deborah that you share that I think there are people, I think there's huge groups of people that are collectively in, in functional freeze. And I definitely think women are um, just lost without direction. We've been suppressed for so long. We're scared to take a step. We're automatically going to functional freeze. And I think that was part of me too, was being so conditioned that I shouldn't do it or we can't do it. Or do you realize that a woman could not get a business loan without a male co-signer until 1988. I was in college. Didn't know that. It, 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 you know, we've really been conditioned and told that we couldn't, shouldn't, all of those things. And so it eventually you listen and, and you become gun shy about trying it and are subconscious um, and all of that. DNA memory, right? They've proven PTSD and uh, causes DNA changes that you pass down in your through generations. And so it builds up. People don't know why they're so pissed. They just know that they are. And so um, it's important to do that. And, and I know people are struggling with, struggling with procrastination, but there's a difference. There's a difference between, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. And yeah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a, there's a huge difference. It's, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting, interesting thing to analyze whether you're, wherever you're hearing this from, um, take a, take a minute and think about that. But Deborah, I mean, this was, this was awesome. I appreciate the mindset tips. We got through two of five I know. <laughs> and we're out of time, but I'm sure that you have done an episode or two on this on your podcast. So let me toss your website on the screen. Uh, where should the listeners go and, and hear more about you and what you have to offer? Um, I would love for them to check out my podcast and you can link to all of the episodes at dealswithheels.com. And you can link to find out more information about me and link to my pod, my website as well. Uh, we talk a lot about mindset and sales and marketing, which is my expertise and entrepreneurism and women empowerment and all of those issues. We're in the middle of season two, and I would love for everyone to check it out. That's so awesome. Um, I was trying to check it out before, but it seems like it's just for women. So I, I wasn't <laughs> able to listen. But <laughs> You know, over half of our viewers on YouTube are men. Really? That's interesting. I know. I found it really interesting too, especially as a marketing person, but we do have a lot of great information. It's delivered by women. And yeah. so, it, and it's focused on women. Um, so we, but, but most of it is good for any gender. It, it's not like it only works for women. It It's just, it's focused on women and, and the materials delivered by women. No, but, I love it. I think that's awesome. I was I was scrolling through your episodes before, as a matter of fact, and I think I saw at least three episodes uh, with former guests of this show too. So I, I can attest, Deborah has great guests on the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, right? please go check that out. Yep we uh we had a guest on that we have a lot of great marketing guests um, on and so I find those really helpful even though I'm a marketing expert I learn stuff so much from guests on my program and being on other programs so um, I really love it that's awesome Deborah I can't thank you enough for being here sharing your wisdom uh, for you listening wherever you are watching or listening dealswithheels.com down in the show notes, uh, all of Deborah's other links too. So you can go follow her social media, check out her other websites. And I hope you go check out the podcast to get those last three tips for mindset. It's just such a cliffhanger. Maybe we'll do a part two. <laughs> we'll definitely go over there first. I'm down for a part two. So I love it. That's so awesome. Thanks mm -hmm. for being here, Deborah. Hey, thanks for having me. I had a great time.
And for the audience, again, wherever you're watching or listening, go subscribe. We love putting these episodes out every single day of the week. We're a little bit crazy, but crazy about your success. And we want you to build a harmonious business and life. We'll see you on the next episode.